Welcome to Amateur Decorating Like a Pro. I am Catherine. Now, I'm so excited to receive this email from one of my new subscribers. It's from Jasmine, and she writes, I just found your channel. I enjoy your detail and information, and may I have a list of the items in your upholstery kit? I am moving and would love to do a couple of projects, but need guidance. Also, which book did you use? May I borrow it from the library? Thanks for your help. I look forward to hearing from you at your convenience. Jasmine. Dear sweet Jasmine, this is for you. I know this book is still out there. I got mine from Hobby Lobby years ago. It's a very old edition, but Amazon has this book used copies for just a couple of dollars. So check Amazon. I checked. Here's my entry as of February the 13th. So there are plenty of options out there for you. So Jasmine, let's talk as if you're sitting right here beside me. If you're going to cover a seat cushion like for a chair in a dining room, the supplies are very minimal. If you're going to do an entire chair, well, you'll need a little bit more. So that's where I'm going to approach this from. I'm just going to tell you what's in the kit, what I use it for, and in the end, you can decide based upon your project what you will need. Now, during this upholstery process, it is not as complicated as people like to make it. I looked through this book and I saw, okay, I got this back of this chair and this side of this chair. So I just came up with my own way of getting it done with the basic principles from this book. And one of the things was to create a pattern. I know how to label the chair before I go ripping the fabric off. And I take the fabric off with ease as opposed to ripping it off. I place each piece of fabric on top of that contractor's paper and then I trace around it allow about an inch and a half to two inches around the edges so that you don't cut the pieces too small because you may not get a whole piece sometimes when you're taking the fabric off of the chair. Now you might have some projects like I did where I just wanted to update maybe the seat cushion or the back. These pattern pieces will definitely come in handy for a project like that. Jasmine, you can get your projects done a whole lot faster if you elevate them. A very inexpensive upholstery table. You can build one with plow woods and a couple of two by fours. I covered my seat cushions for my dining room chairs on top of my dining room table. I protected it with a few old comforters and quilts and did the work there. But make sure that you elevate these projects so you don't have to strain your back or your arms and shoulders bending over them to get them done. Because stapling can be time consuming, but it's best to take precautions with your body. My next table is going to be smaller and taller. It's going to be about three by three and it's going to be two feet tall. So what I have will look pretty similar to this list. So let's go ahead and look in the tote. So let's just go through the first tote. I do have a Ziploc bag. It has chalk for marking. I don't like using any of the colorful pencils. They leave a permanent mark sometimes, but chalk, it just comes right off. And there are needles in here, the curved needles that help me to add a piece of fabric to the corner of an upholstery piece of fabric to pull it through. Those do come in handy sometimes. I do have sliders, but every now and then these come in very, very handy guys. Carpet side down, put them under the leg of the furniture. It'll slide across your hardwood floors and won't leave a single scratch. These are samples. This is cotton cording. I do not use this a lot, nor do I get any requests to use it. This is jute webbing for reinforcing the back or the bottoms of your chairs. This is the cardboard stripping. You will definitely need that when you're going in on the outside arm of the chair and it's pretty easy to apply. An electric knife from Walmart. I got the cheapest one they had. I think it was around $10 and it is definitely time for an upgrade. Thus far, everything I've mentioned to you can be purchased at Walmart. The nail head tax, the cording, all of that. 
at Walmart. Or either go to Joann's Fabrics. But yes, definitely Walmart. The nail head trims I just showed you, those are from Walmart. That entire kit right here is from Walmart. And it looks like I'm putting down a whole bunch of tacks, but it's actually already in a design of a strip and I only put down a certain amount of the tacks. This is an awl. It's used for punching holes in heavy fabrics like leather or even marking areas where you want to insert a nail. I have the round head upholstery pins and the T-shaped upholstery pins. And these foams stay in this tote. I fill these foams up with pins when I'm ready to do upholstery. When I'm done with the upholstery, I put those pins right back in the box. I never recycled batting or anything like that. And I have recycled some foam if it was in good condition and clean. But things that I purchased like batting on sale or remnants that are left over that are still brand new, I fold them up and place them in the tote because the next project, I'm probably going to need more batting or either more of the finishing fabric or the lining for the bottom. And what is this? Landscape fabric. That's what I use to do the lining on the bottom of my chairs or whatever it is I'm working on. You can get it for a dollar a roll at the end of the summer season. Now for now, you'll probably pay about $5 a roll at Dollar General. I love this stuff. If you bought it by the yard from Walmart or wherever, you probably would get just a yard for about $7. But this is perfect. I love it. And I buy like at least five or six at the end of every summer because I know I'm going to use it. And of course, all the small remnants of batting that can cover at least a chair, they're placed inside this tote. So let's unpack the second tote. Notice that there is an envelope taped to the top of this tote. It is for receipts, guys. Keep up with your receipts until your project is done and you're satisfied with the product. First of all, here are my pins that I was telling you about. I don't know why they're there. They should have been inside this smaller container with my tools. Do not rush out to buy this metal tacking strip here. And let me tell you why. Every time, 100% of the time, I've been able to recycle the metal strip that came on the chair. And I'd already ordered this online. Now, Jasmine, you can't have enough staples. I am constantly picking up two boxes just because I'm in the store getting other things. You just can't because you'll start a project and then start another one. And just when you need staples, they're completely out of the size that you need. These tools are a part of an upholstery kit that I ordered online and I've never used all of them. I've only used these two smaller ones here and they've been used to pull out nails or staples that really required a little bit of extra muscle. Cover your rubber mallet with a small piece of fabric and a rubber band. You don't wanna get any of that black rubber on your fabric. I've got a couple of types of pliers here with the rubber handles. I love those. You can buy that at Lowe's or you can buy them at Walmart. I've got a staple remover. I love this hammer. It is perfect for hammering in my tacks, guys. You use your needle nose pliers. You've seen me do that. Hold it in place and then gently tap with that hammer. It's a perfect size. Tap on that hammer. Jasmine, I cannot share scissors. I just can't. I just need for them to be where they need to be for the purpose that I need for them to fulfill. So I have scissors everywhere and some of them have labels on them like fabric, paper. They're all specific. These $9 stretching pliers from Amazon are the best thing ever. Sometimes your wrist can get sore if you got multiple projects to do, but these guys add an additional maybe one or two pounds. So all you have to do is get a good grip on the fabric and just let the pliers add the weight and staple away. I love these pliers. 
I have oil in my kit and it is for my stapler and my compressor. I did do a video on how I set up the equipment and how I use the equipment. I'm going to link all of these videos from the upholstery table and the use of the stapler in the description box of this video. Now I normally purchase these supplies as I need them. I'm talking foam and I try to match the foam to the old foam in height but sometimes I go a little bit higher spray adhesives whether it is construction glue or even if I'm going to paint it I'll need a paintbrush that kind of stuff and the paint I need something to lift up the item and I do use bricks and stuff like that when I paint it in sanding blocks or sanding paper that is how you this make sure that you wear a mask okay and protect your eyes that is so important guys so I do use these. As a matter of fact, like I said, I have a little tote that has gloves in it, and that's in the closet. It's not anything fancy. It's a little Dollar Tree bin and all it has in it are these things right here and these glasses. I got about four pairs of these that I put right on top of my glasses. These are the pins. I get these from Walmart. Very inexpensive. The round heads or either the T. I like the T because they are a little bit smaller. The rounds can be a little difficult to deal with if you've got thick fabric but I like the T, they're easier to push in because of that top, so you can see that, right? I don't think I need to open it, but yeah, these are my favorite, so I would recommend you get these. <laughs> so there you have it. That's what's in the tote, guys. That's what's been in there all this time, and thanks for allowing me to share this with you. Just start small. If you have an electric stapler, that's fine. I'm gonna go ahead and show you the one that I've used in the past. Hold on for a moment. I do have a couple of electric staplers. I have this one and this one I got from Harbor Freight, this one here. So just be mindful of it. Just make a good investment in them. Um, this one here is more for lightweight stuff, stuff that doesn't have a lot of thickness to it. This one goes through things pretty well with thickness. It came from Lowe's, really like that one. There's one by Black and Decker, I think, out there that I hear good things about. But yeah, I am basically using this all the time, guys, with my compressor. So I'm going to link that video for you guys to see. So just make a wise investment because you're going to use it more than one time. So again, just the cheaper it is, the less likely it's going to be with you for the long haul. Well, Jasmine, here's a list of items that I had when I began to do upholstery. I start it with the basics so take a look simple things like a drill or screwdriver things like that are on the list and some of the things that i talked about in this video i hope this gives you a great starting point and i would love to see your projects share those with me as you're making progress over the course of the year and i hope that you stay encouraged and stay creative every step of the way well, that's it for me, guys. If you're not a subscriber, I hope you consider doing so today. And then press the red button so you receive notification when I have uploaded the very next video. Thanks a lot for watching, and as always, stay in prayer and stay creative.